Hello and welcome into another edition of Siena Saints Weekly. I'm your host, Andrew Champagne. In just a moment, we'll be joined by Siena College Athletic Director John Dargenio, but first let's take a look at the week that was in Siena College Athletics. Siena's swimming and diving team has now won six meets in a row. They cruised to a 129-80 win over Sacred Heart at the Siena Swim Center on Saturday. Senior Caitlin Bagioli and junior Katie Ness won three events apiece, and diver Elizabeth Rice once again swept the one and three meter events. Siena is now off for a month. They'll return to action on January 15th when they score off against Bryant, St. Francis, and NJIT in their lone quad meet of the 2010-2011 season. It was a rough week for Siena basketball. The men slipped to their third straight loss, falling to Fairfield 72-55 on Friday night at the Times Union Center. The loss to the Stags was the first loss to a Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference foe in 29 league home games, and they'll look to right the ship tonight against Florida Atlantic. Tonight also has added meeting as Siena legend Mark Showbiz Brown will have his number retired at halftime. And on the women's side, the Saints dropped Sunday's road game at Sacred Heart 72-33. They're off until December 22nd when they'll host UC Santa Barbara at the Arc. That game has a special tip-off time of 11 a.m. as it's the annual Kids' Day celebration. That should be a lot of fun. Now on Siena Saints Weekly, we usually interview a Siena athlete. However, this week we'll change things up as Siena College Athletic Director John Dargenio is in the studio with us. John, welcome to the show. Thanks very much for taking the time to come by. It's great to be here, Andrew. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. It's been another great year for Siena Athletics in 2010. With it drawing to a close, what are your top few moments of the past year? Well, I think you're right. It was a good year. Obviously, it could always be better, and we talked a lot about that with our coaches and athletes at the end of the year. But if you look at calendar year 2010, uh, certainly the men's basketball team winning its third straight MAC title and NCAA appearance uh, was a highlight. Our women's soccer team, uh, its first ever MAC championship, NCAA appearance, I think it was two weeks in a row being ranked in the top 25. And I think the third moment is actually away from the fields of competition, but for us in athletics, it's it is now being part of the college's strategic plan, so they'll be rolling out a new plan shortly, and athletics will be a strategic initiative in that plan. So it's kind of an understated highlight, if you will, but if done right, it will have great repercussions for the college and the department over the years to come. Sounds really exciting. Now, tonight's a big night for CN Athletics. Welcome back, Mark Showbiz Brown. He'll have his number retired at halftime. You were the sports information director back then when he played. What did he mean to the Siena basketball program? Well, in many ways, Mark put the program on the map in that modern Division I era. Siena basketball has a great tradition dating back to the 50s, but what Mark did, particularly leading us to our first NCAA appearance in 89 and beating Stanford, and then just what he did individually and the accolades he garnered really propelled Siena basketball to that next level of Division I competition. Again, that ceremony will take place at halftime of tonight's game between Siena and Florida Atlantic at the Times Union Center. John, what's it going to feel like seeing so many old faces back in town for the celebration this evening? I think it's going to be a lot of fun for everybody, not just the players, the staff that are, is still here, but also for the fans. Uh, you know, it'll be a nice halftime ceremony with some highlights of Mark. People that are in the stands that saw him play will be able to reminisce quite a bit. And what I think is important is just another example of the history of Siena basketball and to be able to share that with our fans to remind them of it just hasn't been the past three years but it's been a, a lot of decades of great Siena success and also the current players get to see that as well because sometimes today we get caught up in the moment of what's happening now and we forget to reflect on everybody that's come before us so I think that should help our players as well. On another note, you already mentioned the new strategic plan for Siena College. It's entitled Living Our Tradition. Tell us a little bit more about it. Well, I think what's exciting about it on a lot of levels is that Siena is in a great position to live its tradition, but to live it very publicly uh, through academic success, through athletic success, through student engagement. Uh, and we're, we're going to be able to hopefully propel the college to the next level of success. Uh, speaking specifically about athletics, the idea is not just to invest in athletics to win games, to win championships, but to invest in athletics to raise the entire profile of the institution. So for us, that's very exciting. I think for the college, it's exciting because we can bring Siena to a whole nother group of people, really continue to put our uh, reputation and profile further out of our geographic footprint. 
You mentioned athletics a little bit in there. What specifically are some of the initiatives you guys are looking to go with? Well, it really centers around consistent success. It centers around academic success and student engagement. Uh, certainly, if we want to leverage athletics, we need a product to leverage. Uh, so we want to make sure we have the best facilities for our student athletes. We give them the best support staff because that's going to make them successful. It's going to give the college a product that it can leverage, that it can promote. So, you know, hopefully we'll have some facility renovations. Hopefully we'll be able to do some things in service to our student athletes that's going to make uh, everybody better. Sounds great. We're going to spare you from the lightning round this week. It's huh. our usual way okay. of tormenting. However, we need to have some fun with you here. I can't this wait. This is a picture here of we John go. D'Argenio back in the 1980s, complete with what I have to say is a pretty awesome mustache. You like that? What's the story behind the stash, John? <laughs> I actually had one for a very long time. Uh, going into college, graduate school, my first few years here at Siena, and then just one day I decided it was time to change it up a little bit, so it's been gone ever since. I think it was uh, probably in the mid-90s. Did that coincide with the time period where Hall & Oates sort of faded into obscurity? That <laughs> <laughs> it might have been, subconsciously, yes. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this week. I'd like to once again thank John D'Argenio for stopping by and being such a good sport. We're going to go on hiatus for a few weeks for Sienna's holiday break, but we'll be back at some point in January with a special edition of Sienna Saints Weekly. I'm Andrew Champagne. Happy holidays, everyone, and I'll see you next year.